Sacred scripture and visionaries speak about a coming great storm like a hurricane upon the whole earth. We're going to talk now about the eye of that storm next on Countdown to the Kingdom. Hello, I'm Mark Mallett, and I'm joined now by Professor Daniel O'Connor in Albany, New York. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Mark. Good to be here, as always. Well, here we are now at the seventh seal. This is the climax of the timeline that you and I have been talking about now for several weeks. And uh, it's been quite a journey for us, but I think we're both pretty excited about this webcast because there's so many elements we want to talk about that have to do not only with what is coming, a day of tremendous hope for the world, but also it's going to be challenging to all of us right now to get ready for what is coming this oh, yeah. uh, this an morning. Exhortation. <laughs> it's an exhortation to all of us. This, The eye of the storm, that's the moment that we're all waiting for, isn't it? Even mm -hmm. when a literal storm is on track to, uh, to hit us. So this is a perfect analogy for what's coming, and boy, does it demand our response and our preparation spiritually. Yeah, that's right, Daniel. And for those of us who are just joining us, you can see on your screen right now, there's the eye of the storm, but here is the the image itself uh, blown up, a bit, I guess, a bit on countdowntothekingdom.com. And I just, you know, maybe just a word for a second on this timeline. And let me just go back again to <clears throat> the image and to zoom in a bit so you can all see it. For those of you who are just joining us, we're talking about a timeline of events according to the vision of St. John. And, you know, a lot of people are writing us and they're saying, you know, well, you know, we want to dispute your timeline and this and that and that. And we just want to repeat that what we're speaking about here is a clear straightforward reading of the Apocalypse of St. John. It's straightforward. And the early church fathers interpreted it this way. So Daniel and I didn't sit down at coffee one day and say, hey, you know, this is my interpretation. What do you think? You know, it's not. We, we just taken a, a clear, straightforward reading, what the church fathers have said, and then we've matched that with what the popes and then, of course, what the seers are saying on countdowntothekingdom.com. And man, is it one coherent picture. Yeah, and remember, countdowntothekingdom.com is not an effort for us to try and orchestrate or collude some sort of consensus that doesn't exist. We don't have the ability to do that, as I said in the last webcast. This is a prophetic consensus that we did not create, we just discovered. And it didn't take much to discover it, because all you have to do is open your eyes and your ears, and you'll see and hear what heaven is saying to the church today, what the Spirit is saying to the church today. It is not right. ambiguous, mm -hmm. and it is not confusing. It's very clear. And we're lining that up as well with what a clear reading of Scripture tells us. So, if, if you, And if you have a problem with what a clear reading of Scripture says, uh, don't take that up with us. Dude. <laughs> take, that up, <laughs> take that up with the author. Uh, take, take that up with the author of sacred Scripture, which, by the way, is God. Right. So, um, so that's where I think we'll just leave it, that we're going to continue moving forward, even though inevitably every single thing we, can, we're, we're, we could possibly say about the book of Revelation is going to anger millions of people out there who are very attached to their favorite eschatological speculation, their favorite uh, author on end times. Uh, but look, we're just kind of leaving all that aside mm -hmm. and taking a look at heaven and taking a look at a clear reading of Scripture, always in accordance with Catholic teaching and Catholic doctrine, above all, right. never contradicting any of that, and proceeding with prayer and discernment. And when we say timeline, folks, we aren't talking about dates. We're not talking yeah, about... We don't mean timetables. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so timeline means just a, a timeline of events that could happen within our lifetime. We think it's going to happen probably... I mean, the way things are going right now, it obviously is unfolding very quickly. You, you've seen that in previous webcasts, how the headlines are, are... You know, we can't even keep up with it, Daniel and I. So... Anyway, what we want to do now, we want to move to the center of this storm, to the eye of the storm, which is the hurricane and the seventh seal. So all the previous seals now, the first seal, the second, which is peace shattered, the third seal, economic collapse, the fourth seal, social collapse, the fifth seal, persecution, and then the sixth seal, the eye wall of this great hurricane is what the mystics and seers have spoken about as a warning, an illumination of conscience for the world that is like a judgment in miniature when everyone will see their souls the way God sees it. 
And according to St. Faustina, and I, I, you know, he said to her, to St. Fa- Jesus, and I'm speaking about Jesus, he said, before the day of justice comes, I am giving you the day of of mercy. And so, you know, since he gave these revelations to St. Faustina, we could say we're living in that day. But, you know, I think there's a literal day coming, this day of warning and illumination when God is going to open wide the doors of mercy. Why? Because this will be a last chance for the world to repent, because this is how far we have fallen from God that he has to correct the world. He has to restore and renew it. Otherwise, we would, with our weapons of destruction, we would destroy the world the way we're going. Where the world, you know, I've quoted before, perhaps not in these webcasts, but in other writings I've done about this incredible mercy that God shows a soul at the moment of death. He speaks extensively about this to St. Faustina and to the servant of God, Luis Picaretta about how he just holds nothing back at the moment of death to snatch a soul out of the fires of hell, to Mm -hmm. show unprecedented mercy to that soul. And I have absolute confidence that he does that with every soul at the moment of death, that he holds nothing back Mm -hmm. to try one last time to snatch them from the fires of hell. And guess what? The world, the church, is at the moment of death right now, spiritual death. Mm -hmm. We We are there. And if you, if you doubt that, take a look at our previous webcast. So what is God going to do? The same thing he does for an individual soul at the moment of death. He holds nothing back and he reveals his mercy as much as he can. And that demands our response. We talked about the nature of that in the last webcast. In this webcast, we're going to focus on what we need to do about it when right. this reprieve comes after the warning. Well, with that, then why don't we turn to our website at countdowntothekingdom.com. You can see it on your screen there. There's the timeline that we've been showing you. You can click on that and it will enlarge. Um, But you'll see on the website, we have these tabs underneath it. And right now we're on the seventh seal. So before we go any further, let's just read the text. And in this case, it's fairly short from Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. There's one very quick verse here. When he broke open the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Silence. Silence. Now, I have... We're aware that we skipped a chapter there, by the way. We know that there's Revelation chapter 7. We're going to get to that. That's that's key. Yeah, we didn't delete that. Yeah. What's it say? It says at the the back of the book of Revelation... Whoever removes a word from this this prophecy will have, you know, his name removed from the book of life. That's right. So we... If I'm I'm remembering that. Yeah, so we just removed a chapter rather than just a word. So (laughs) So we're good, yeah. (laughs) So we're good. That's right. (laughs) But we promise we're not skipping chapter 7. That factors into this report very significantly but you know i was sharing in a previous webcast how you know i one day this was 2006 i was drawn out to go and watch a storm and pray and as i watched the storm there was a word in my heart very clear word that there is a great storm like a hurricane coming upon the world shortly after i sat down and i felt as i opened the bible to revelation chapter 6 i sensed the lord say that this is the great storm and so as i was reading this daniel that day i kept thinking well you know if it's going to be like a hurricane then everything is going to get more intense just like a hurricane the closer you get to the eye but there's got to be an eye of the storm and so when i read revelation 8 1 that you just read my my jaw dropped because this is the the calm the eye of the storm But I guess before we can really get into more detail about this calm and what it is and how we're going to respond and we need to respond, we just want to just very quickly highlight our our sixth seal that came before it. Because in that seal, as I was saying, there's an illumination of conscience, a warning that's going to happen, a judgment in miniature. People will see their souls as God sees them. Um, It was said St. Edmund Campion who said this will be the great day of decision. Um, Maria Esperanza, servant of God, said that this will be a great day of light. And so we know that this is a moment. This is really a moment of turning, Daniel, for the whole world. And so let's go to Revelation chapter 7. And what we read there is it says, God says, after this, St. John says, he saw a vision of the four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds. And, and basically, the Lord says, do nothing, no, nothing to the trees, no harm to the earth or the sea, until 
you have sealed the servants of our God upon their foreheads. So this illumin this eye wall of the storm is a moment of decision, and God is going to seal the foreheads of those who basically accept the grace of that hour. Right. So this is, you know, because of course there will be protection for them. We've talked in previous webcasts about how we don't have guarantees of physical protection, but yes, by and large, God is going to protect his remnant, even physically, because his goal here is the era. He's going to build, he's going to, his kingdom is going to come on earth. He's going to need people for that. So before these great chastisements in the, in the door of justice time period of the timeline, he's going to mark those who have chosen him. And there's, uh, there's some very powerful quotes here from some from, from seers on this marking as well. Mm -hmm. do, do we have time to get to that right now, or should yeah, we hold off on that? the one that's on my heart is the one from uh, to Servant of God, Louisa Picaretta. Mm. And it's, it, I mean, I tell you, it's like a page right out of this oh, book yeah. of Revelation. It's, it's amazing, because it also ties this in to, as we are constantly reiterating the need for, consecration to Our Lady, devotion to Our Lady. Yeah. Jesus told the servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, you must know that I always love my children, my beloved creatures. I would eviscerate myself in order to not see them stricken. So much so that in the sorrowful times that will come, I have placed them all into the hands of my celestial mother. I have entrusted them to her so that she keeps them secure for me under her mantle. I will give to her all those whom she will want. Death itself will not have power over those in the custody of my mother. So this is Jesus describing the graces that he is and the power over the chastisements that he's given to his mother. But then Louisa describes what she sees as a result of this. Louisa describes it as follows. Jesus made me see the sovereign queen descended from heaven with an indescribable majesty and a tenderness all maternal. She went around in the midst of creatures and all the nations, and she marked her dear children, those who must not be touched by the scourges. Each one that my celestial mother touched, the scourges had no power over those creatures. Sweet Jesus gave the right to his mother of placing in safety whoever she pleased. And I'll stop the quote there just because it's a long one. And if you wanted to look it up, that's from June 6, 1935. But look at that. Whoever. She has complete, not that she's God, of course not, but Jesus has given her complete power over the coming chastisement. She will mark all of her dear children who are not to be touched by the scourges. And the reason for that, brothers and sisters, is we are coming to a purification of the world. This has been said in Scripture it's very clear in the prophet Zechariah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, the book of Revelation, that God is going to purify the world for a time of peace and justice here on earth, true justice and peace. And just as God gave an ark for Noah, he has given an ark in our times, as he said to, in the approved revelations to Elizabeth Kinnelman, my mother is Noah's ark, Jesus said to her. And so this is why Our Lady has been given this right, you could say, to protect her children for the era of peace that is coming, for the new world in a sense that God is going to renovate. And, you know, we're not talking about the new heavens and the new earth at the end of time, but, but what we're talking about is basically the gospels being fulfilled, the scriptures being fulfilled. When all the nations, as it says in Isaiah, will stream toward the house of the Lord, when Jesus said the meek will inherit the earth. I mean, there's so many scriptures we could read right now, but it, it yeah. will be a vindication of God's word. And maybe Matthew 24, the, the prime one is Jesus said this gospel will be preached to the, to the nations as a witness to them, and then the end will come, he says. Yeah. And I would say the prime one is what you all know and what, what I hope you're saying mm -hmm. hundreds of times a day. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. That will happen. It cannot not happen. Jesus prayed it. He prophesied it. He promised it. And it is two plus two will be five before Jesus is proven wrong. This and two plus I, two will never be five. <laughs> I'm sorry, Daniel. Um, this eye of the storm, brothers and sisters, that we're speaking about, I mean, this, 
you have to understand this is not just another moment in salvation history, a little reset. This is a major culmination of thousands of years of history. And Brother Daniel, I'm thinking of, again, another word that Jesus gave to Servant of God, Lu Louisa Picaretta, about the renewal of the eras. And this is really important because Jesus, we have here in, in a revelation, him giving us kind of a general sense of not an exact date, right. but a very clear time period that is right now. Yeah, and this is just you know we I, we could have easily bring in the, brought this up in, in any of our webcasts, but now is I think the fitting time for it. Just to remind you all, not to become complacent. We've already said we don't have timetables for you, and we don't we don't take that back. But we do have a general idea that this is the time that you got to have your game face on right now. The the analogy I used talking to Mark before was, you know, if these events that we're speaking of are the game itself, we're standing there listening to the anthem right now. It is about to start. It is so close. Jesus told the servant of God, Luis Picaretta, every 2,000 years I have renewed the world. In the first 2,000, I re in, in the first 2,000 years, I renewed it with the deluge, that is the flood. In the second 2,000, I renewed it with my coming upon earth. Of course, that is the incarnation, the redemption. Now we are around the third 2,000 years, and there will be a third renewal. This is the reason for the general confusion. It is nothing other than the preparation of the third renewal. You know what's profound about that is the word you just said, general confusion. And, and Isn't everybody's that the case feeling, today? Oh my gosh, right? People, you know, you... You, you, say, you hear one thing on the internet, and you look up and you find the opposite. You hear one thing said, you, you find the opposite, and people are so confused right now. No, and in, uh, even in the church itself, as Jesus said, those days will be shortened for the sake of the elect, that even if they weren't shortened, even the elect would not be saved. Would not, would not, would not be saved. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll be shaved because you shaved Mark before this webcast. I did. But, I did. Yeah, you, you look good, by the it way. Was, um, it was prophetic. They don't know, <laughs> it was a prophetic it. shave. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Sister Lucia of Fatima, she said that there would come a diabolical disorientation. Right. And, you and know, uh, that's lining up exactly. And, and by the way, I just want to say, when you get to the eye wall of the storm, this is where the winds, right, are most intense. This is where you got dust and debris and everything. You can't even look at it. And so, again, we have these things lining up the scripture in private revelation, telling us a time of confusion, a time of disorientation. But as Jesus said, all of this is preparing the world for a coming renewal. And there are so many passages, I won't, since we need to move on with the seventh seal, I won't quote them now, but where Jesus talks about this chaos that, that people are expect this, people are looking at the present era, dark and bloody, confused by it, discouraged by it, dis despairing because of it. They know, even in the world in general, that something is about to radically change, but the problem is they don't know what. You only know what is coming if you've read the revelations, which is why those relative few of you seeing these webcasts, I mean, the number might be kind of big, but the proportion is small. If you think about the world at large and how few people there are that know these things, your job is pivotal in what's coming the mere, by the mere fact that you know this. So this confusion that we see everywhere. But as I was mentioning before, especially in the church, that the very basic Orthodox teachings are, uh, we're, we have fewer and fewer Catholics and Christians even acknowledging them anymore. We're getting to the point where it will soon be deemed hate speech. So we are certainly living in this time of confusion that Jesus is prophesying here. And we do not intend to give dates to you, but let's also look at what Jesus said that about it, he renews the world every 2,000 years, and he renewed the world with his redemption. We, of course, know that. Now, I'm not going to get into all those debates about when exactly, what, how much our calendar is off, but look, redemption, the 2,000th anniversary of redemption is coming up. Whether it's 2033 or somewhat before that or somewhat after that, I won't That's get right, into now, yeah. but we are there. We are just about there. So we are, uh, we are at, these events are at the very doorstep. Brothers and sisters, if there's confusion right now, in part what God is doing, and we've had several seers saying this, is he is taking away the supports of the church. I'm thinking right now, Daniel, of that prophecy given at Rome in 1976 in St. Peter's Square. 
Pope Paul VI was there. My auntie was there. She heard it. Many people have written me and confirmed, of course, it was there. This is no question about it. But Jesus said that basically he's going to purify his bride and that when we have nothing, then we will have him. And I, it's such a beautiful word. It, it, you can go to our website at countdowntothekingdom.com and you can just type in Ralph Martin who gave that prophecy or type in the prophecy at Rome and read the whole thing. And Jesus basically says, when you have nothing, then you'll have me. But he eventually says, I, he says, I'm preparing you. I should have had this ready, Daniel. Yeah, but no, I mean, that's all right. Because I think even without the quote, I think just by you saying that, I think everybody is feeling it. Because we have all had that happen, haven't we? We that's have had right. things right. that we have thought we could rely upon for, mm -hmm. for our whole lives suddenly become, suddenly be taken from us. Look, I, I, I still remember being a World Youth Day in, in 2008 in Sydney and, and, and looking at Versace, looking at, you know, praying next to his, in his, his body and, and deciding you know, this young man spent so much time in prayer, went to Mass every day, I'm going to go to Mass every single day for the rest of my life. And I was convinced that I would be able to every single day for the rest of my life, and I did for 12 years. And then suddenly there were no more Masses. Everything we thought we could depend upon is being taken from us. So that, why is this being allowed? Well, God doesn't want, <laughs> it is not part of His ordained will to have the public sacrifice of the Mass end, certainly not. But He's permitting it because He is stripping us of everything so that we cling solely to him and his divine will. In that prophecy at Rome, Jesus also says, and this is really key, because this ties into what we're talking about right now. He says, I am also preparing you for a time of evangelism that the world has never seen. I will pour out gifts and blessings mm -hmm. upon you. And so what we want to focus on now on this seventh seal is also something else happening. Now, we've talked about in this previous video on the sixth seal, there will be an illumination of conscience. It will be very painful for many who aren't prepared. For those who are preparing, it will also be a time of grace. And God is going to, you know, like the eye of a storm, if we're in a time of diabolical disorientation and confusion, when that eye of the storm passes over, there is going to be clarity. There is going to be light. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters right now, who are feeling crushed by this present moment, who are feeling the supports falling away, who are wondering, is Jesus left me? Is God disappointed with me? You're feeling discouraged. You're feeling alone. I want to tell you, you will know in that moment that Jesus has never left you. He would never leave his bride as much as Daniel wouldn't leave his, and I would never leave my dear wife. So you need to know Jesus is with us. And in that moment of illumination, Daniel has a quote, I think you have one queued up there, regarding from Elizabeth Kindleman, servant of God Elizabeth Kindleman, on our website at Countdown to the Kingdom, where Jesus speaks also about the blessings. Our Lady speaks about the blessings that are going to come in this moment. That right. are gonna, It's going to be like a new Pentecost. Yeah, this is a outpouring of the Holy Spirit like never before in history. I mean, all we could compare it to is Pentecost itself, but this is over the whole world. And yes, Elizabeth Kindleman, and these approved, revolution, uh, re approved revelations have many references to, I think, the warning in it. And I just have a couple of brief quotes here. Our Lady told Elizabeth Kindleman, hurry up, my little one. It is already near the moment when my flame of love will light up. And at this very moment, Satan will become blind. She also told Elizabeth, Satan's blindness is something which will overturn the world. Wow. So, I mean, you know, this is why it looks right now like Satan is winning. And, you know, we heard a message from Medjugorje back in March where she said, Satan is reigning. I, I can't remember, Daniel, how long it was before that. She, there was another message from Medjugorje where she said, Satan is going to reign. But now she says he is reigning. And so mm. we're at a time right now, you can mm. see that, where this the, the diabolical disorientation is really reaching a peak. But in this moment of illumination, not only will our consciences be illuminated, but God is going to pour out tremendous graces. I want to turn right now to countdowntothekingdom.com to a, another quote from the, or from the revelations to Father Stefano Gobi that have the imprimatur. And there, to Father Stefano Gobi, um, Jesus says, or rather, I think it's Our Lady, 
She says the Holy Spirit will come to establish the glorious reign of Christ, and it will be a reign of grace, of holiness, of love, of justice, and of peace. So here is the, the reference to the era of peace. But then she says, with his divine love, he, the Holy Spirit, will open the doors of hearts and illuminate all consciences. Every person will see himself in the burning fire of divine truth. It will be like a judgment in miniature. And then Jesus Christ will bring his glorious reign in the world. So the first thing I would say about this is what you're hearing in this message is a compressed message. Don't think of this as, as a complete timeline, because right. in the other messages to Father Gobi, uh, Our Lady speaks about Antichrist. So, before this reign of Jesus that uh, Father Gobi is saying in this message, there will be an Antichrist. There will be this time where the Church is going to go through its own passion. But this glorious era of peace really is the resurrection of the Church, a resurrection to the divine will. What what Daniel was just saying earlier, when the Our Father, the Pater Noster, is going to be fulfilled, when His will will be done on earth and heaven. And this is the culmination of all the scriptures, of all of God's plan to restore creation, to restore us in Christ, that of course will have its definitive fulfillment in heaven. But this uh, go ahead, Daniel. I can see you have something well, to say. Well, no, I was just, it was a general point just about what you brought up there that, look, you will fall into many errors if you would just assume that any time a revelation, be it private revelation or public revelation, says A and then B. Right. If you assume that nothing else can happen in between those two. That is, a, uh, that is an unjustified extrapolation. And all sorts of people have missed out on all sorts of things coming upon the world because they've, they've, um, come up with their own interpretations that are not necessarily what the text themselves what the text itself implies so here as mark said if you read father Gobi, you know full well that he was told very clearly of the chastisements in the antichrist right but right in it, right now in this quote what's being focused on is the illumination and the era this burning fire of divine truth a judgment in miniature so whatever you can imagine happening as i said in the last webcast about your particular judgment that's very similar to what you're going to see in this illumination of conscience so how do we respond to that you know as we look at this message here again we're seeing another reflection of a part of the book of revelation revelation chapter 12. Now, we know in the book, well, we know we're in a time where the woman clothed in the sun is battling with the dragon. And this woman clothed in the sun in the book of Revelation chapter 12, she's crowned with 12 stars. Pope Benedict said this woman represents the people of God, the people of Israel, and the church. So that's the interpretation of the magisterium. And of course, the church fathers and many others have given that interpretation that it also refers to Our Lady and not just the church and not just Israel. But there's a battle between this woman and the dragon. Now, we want to point out something in Revelation chapter 12. Uh, let me just turn to it. There's something that happens in Revelation chapter 12 where this woman and the dragon are battling. And then all of a sudden, it says that the great dragon, oh sorry, now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels were fighting against the dragon, and his angels fought back, and they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven, and the great dragon was thrown down to the earth. Now if you read the context of this, it's, it's very clear, because the next sentences say that this dragon then goes after the followers of Jesus. So we're not talking about an event that happened thousands of years ago when Satan first rejected God and him and a third of the angels were cast out of heaven. We're talking about a, some kind of future event. And if you'll recall, brothers and sisters, um, Pope Leo XIII had a vision during Mass. This was in the end of the 19th century. When all of a sudden the mass stopped, he left, according to the legend of how this goes, it's a fairly established legend, of course, that, that he saw a com or heard a conversation between God and Satan, who asked for a century to test the church. And after that, Pope Leo XIII composed a prayer to St. Michael the Archangel that we began to pray, and he asked that it would be prayed after every Mass. And so churches did throughout the entire world began to pray this. And as we pray in that prayer, 
Saint Michael the say sorry, Saint Michael the Archangel cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. You know, this was a prayer, Daniel, for the exorcism of Satan from the church and the world. And what we're seeing in in, uh, Father Gobi's message right now is he speaks about this coming of the fire of divine truth. Well, when light comes in through the illumination of conscience, Darkness is going to be expelled, Daniel. This is why I said in a previous webcast, people are going to be liberated in this moment. People are going to be set free from Satan. There's going to be an exorcism literally in people's lives who have been bound, and it will give them this opportunity for this time of repentance for the prodigal sons and daughters to be able to return home. Right. This moment of complete freedom where you have an opportunity to choose God or against him. And if you do not choose wisely, you cannot say the devil made me do it because he will be exorcised from the earth for a period of time. This will be brief is the key. As Mark said, this is not the era. This is a reprieve. This is the eye of the storm, not the end of the storm. So what happens then if we do not deal wisely with that with that opportunity, if we do not choose wisely when this when this when the devil is cast out knowing that this is not his definitive casting out this is not the era itself um should we take a look then at what our lord says in the gospel about such a situation and yeah I know, yeah let's I just know let's the scripture just, you're referring to and yeah and i just want to add to what you're saying is just going previously to the message from elizabeth kindleman where our lady says that satan will be blinded and so Again, there will be a moment, and we're going to talk about this in a future webcast, where for the era of peace, it says, according to St. John, that Satan will be chained in the abyss for a period of a thousand years. And as the early church fathers said, that is a symbolic number. It's not meant to be taken literal. The second thing is Jesus will reign in the church and not on earth. So during there's coming a time when Satan is going to be chained, but right now, he's blinded this is a moment right. when people when satan will be cast out when he will be exorcised from people but this is why daniel is going to point out now this is so important that we respond this is why this webcast is so urgent this admonition this exhortation to you to remember you know you might forget for a while what we're saying now but hopefully you'll remember it after this warning hits and you will remember how urgent the opportunity that is presented to you and to all those around you is, because here's what our Lord says in the gospel itself in Matthew 12. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he passes through waterless places seeking rest, but he finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and brings with him seven other spirits, more evil than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. So shall it be also with this evil generation. And although he said that a couple thousand years ago, I think it's safe to say, boy, does that apply to a big part of our generation today. Mm-hmm. If you have these demons cast out, that is a golden, that is an opportunity that will not last because if you don't fill yourself with the Holy Spirit, as the saying goes, nature abhors a vacuum you will be filled again with those evil spirits that were cast out and uh, that left a void and that you failed to fill with God. And here was what is maybe so exciting about this webcast right now is, and we want to say this also is kind of a bit of an exhortation to you, is we're not saying let's just sit and wait for the warning to come and kind of wait out COVID-19, wait out these seals to be broken and definitive. No, we're saying this is a time to engage and actually prepare now because Our Lady and Our Lord are actually giving the graces right now that are coming. Maybe I just will point out one more thing about Revelation chapter 12. If we go back to that message, well, I'm just lost here. Um, This is a technological uh, wonder that we're pulling off here, and it's a wonder that I'm just so messed up. (laughs) Well, that's beautiful. That's where we are, the eye of the storm. Oh, the eye of the storm. There we go. One of the things Father Gobi says in this message is, is he says 
that the Holy Spirit is coming to establish his reign. Other seers have spoken about this moment also being a, a Pentecost. So we, we don't want to get into all these quotes. You can go to our website and read these. But this coming of divine light and truth is, we believe also, is the beginning of this reign already in the hearts of the people. And the reason we say that is that after this exorcism of the dragon that we read in, in Revelation chapter 12, you'll see just right, right above us there, this is what it says in the scripture. Now have salvation and power come in the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed. So you can read that further on the website, but basically St. John is, is saying that the kingdom has come in this moment when the exorcism of the dragon has, you know, the dragon's been kicked out. It's in the hearts of the faithful that God is going to pour out. It's the beginning of the second Pentecost that Pope John Paul II, Paul VI, John the Twenty-Third, and uh, Benedict the Sixteenth have been praying for, this new Pentecost. And it begins in that moment. And so what I'm saying is so exciting about this is that we're, this isn't an idle time. This is the time that Our Lady is calling us through many seers. She has been for decades to be forming a cenacle, which means prayer groups, times of prayer. And the reason for that is for this upper room movement, movement uh, moment when there will be a new Pentecost coming upon the earth. And this is be just in that upper room. That's the message, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, don't I, I wouldn't say lock the doors like the apostles did in fear, but be prayerfully in that upper room, purifying your soul, examining your conscience, purifying your soul, going to confession, but above all, remaining in prayer in the divine will, so that you are completely open. It has been said, I think rightfully so, that holiness consists in getting out of God's way. So get the self-will out of the way so that you are ready right now to receive an outpouring of the Holy Spirit because you, you're, you should never wait for the warning, as Mark just said. But yes, the warning will come and you want to be sure you are ready for that. You want to be sure that you're ready to be among that relatively small group that, yes, will be purified even further by the warning, but will be ready to immediately pick themselves back up and get to work to reap the greatest harvest of souls in history. You know, you talked about a small group, and that brings us to our next quote from Servant of God, Elizabeth Kindleman. Sorry, is she a servant of God? Suddenly that just... She's not a servant of God, not. but I'm sure she is, but she's, she's not See, officially... I'm committing yeah. error already. <laughs> Our Lady said to Elizabeth, the torrential flood of blessings about to jolt the world must begin with the small number of the most humble souls. Each person getting this message should receive it as an invitation, and no one should take offense nor ignore it. So, you know, my written to my uh, readership on thenower.com about Our Lady's little rabble, this little group that she is getting together right now, preparing us for this seventh seal, this calm, this eye of the storm. And this is what we want to talk about and kind of finish up our webcast with, is about this great hour of evangelization that is coming down now. Oh, yeah, because it's going to, and, you know, I, I understand the magnitude of what I said when I said, I hope you're ready to reap the greatest harvest of souls in history, but I stand by it because I believe that what's coming after the warning is going to make even the flood of converts in the beginning of Christianity, even the flood of converts of the whole Western Hemisphere after Our Lady of Guadalupe, I think it's going to make all those look small because this world of billions and billions of people today, most of them have departed from Christ or don't know him, and everyone is going to be have his, his mercy and his justice revealed to them in this warning. So you who know what's coming, you extremely few, you need to be ready to evangelize. You need, you need to be ready to be a witness, to get onto the streets. And don't, do, don't wait for the warning. Remember, do this now, yes. But prepare your soul, prepare your mind as well to be ready to hit the ground running the moment the warning ends. So yes, after the warning, do an act of perfect contrition. Oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee. Not so much because of thy just punishments, but because I have offended thee, my God, who art all good, worthy of all my love. Say that immediately after the warning. Mean it with all your heart. Get to confession and then hit the streets and get evangelizing. 
It's a time when priests are going to be, uh, we said before, there's going to be lineups to yeah. confession. You're going to need to bring them food. <laughs> That's right. You know, a lot of people have been writing us, Daniel, asking, you know, you guys haven't talked about how to evangelize people. And I think this would be a good opportunity. This is the right moment to talk about it because you're going to have to be ready, whether you want to be or not. You have to be ready to explain your faith. And that's right from the Bible itself, where Peter said, always be ready to give an explanation for your hope. And so, do you understand the basics of your Christian faith? How are we saved? What do we have to do to be saved? If you don't know, you need to learn this. I mean, go to right to John 3.16. Start right there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. You could read that to someone and say, there you have it. There's this simple scripture right here where Jesus is coming. You see, you can tell now. You've just had this illumination of conscience. You need to know that this is Jesus' mercy. He hasn't come to condemn you. He's giving you this opportunity to turn to him. And so all you need to do is put your faith in him and trust in him and follow him. Because following Jesus doesn't mean just intellectually believing him. Look, the devil believes in Satan and he's not saved. No, it means to follow, to have faith, said St. James, is to have it followed by works. And so you need to repent right now. You need to turn back to Jesus. Yeah, I know. I can see your tears. I know that you're shaking from what just happened. But you need to know God is love. It doesn't say in the Bible that God is loving. It says God is love. And so you need to know that even now, He is love to you and you can turn to Him without fear. And so look, I'm going to take you down the street. I know where Father so-and-so is. And you can see Him and you can go to confession. And so, I mean, this I'm just saying this off the cuff of my heart. And you might say, well, Mark, that's fine. You're an evangelist. Look, folks, you need to try. This is why Our Lady is saying right now, get into these cenacles. Get into this time of prayer. Pray, 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 Our Lady said at Medjugorje. Why? Because when you pray, 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 when you read the Word of God, when you go back to the Eucharist, when you yourself are partaking in monthly confession and you're fasting and praying, then you are being purified. You are being renewed. You are drawing closer into a personal relationship with Jesus. And now from that personal relationship, you can talk from your experience to people. And that's all I'm doing right now. And so... Be a witness. And that's what we need, witnesses. An authentic witness. We don't need a bunch of apologists right now because the age of apologetics is over. We are in the age of witnesses now. As Pope as Pope Saint Paul VI said in Evangelii Nunciandi, uh, you know, this is an act of the magisterium. He said that modern man listens more willingly to witnesses than to teachers. And I'm and I'm saying that as a teacher. So please take my word for this. That is true. And he continues. He says, if it does listen to teachers, it is because they are witnesses. So we need to first be witnesses. And how are you a witness? Through the holiness of your life. But the holiness of your life, I would liken it to the fuel of a fire. And that's by far the most important part for a fire. But what in addition to the fuel is needed? Well, at least a little spark. So spend the majority of your effort becoming holy, becoming like Jesus, becoming a saint, living in the divine will. But also we need that spark, which are words like what Mark just said, something to incarnate your witness in words, the charisma, the essence of the gospel, the divine mercy, mm -hmm. hand them a divine mercy image, say he's coming soon, but he wants you to trust him first. Can you do that? I've said that to so many people on the streets. And that's, you know, I, I had a, a, a hardcore Baptist approach me once. I was doing a divine will missionary mercy walk. And um, he said, he looked pointed at my crucifix. He said, you know, he, you know, Jesus isn't on the cross anymore. And I could have gotten into a big apologetics debate with him, but I didn't. I just said, oh, uh, that just reminds me to be thankful. And that was it. And that, it, it completely changed him right, right there. Mm -hmm. the, so you don't waste a, like all this time and effort getting an apologetic certificate. You're ready without it. If you are ready to be a witness, if you're ready to tell people that God exists, that he loves you, that he became man 2000 years ago, and that he didn't leave us as orphans. Instead, he founded a church and he gave his power to priests by breathing upon them. And that the very forgiveness of Jesus can descend upon your soul through the words of absolution 
of a Catholic priest. That's 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 that that will blow people away after they have been revealed. Their after they've seen their sins revealed to them in the warning, they need to hear that from you. And it's so easy to say that. Yeah. And if you need to brush up on the basics of that God exists, that He became man, that He founded the church, I walked through. I walked through the basics of that in the beginning of my book, The Crown of Sanctity, because I want you to be ready to do this. You can feel free to review that, but you also need to be able to tell them the nature of the times we're in because they're going to be so uh, confused as to why this happened now, what's going on in the world. You need to tell them that God has a plan, that the world is about to be purified, but he's giving you a chance to choose the right side before the purification begins because in this purification, he's going to prepare the world for his kingdom. And that is the most exciting news you can imagine. And you need to be ready to share it with everyone. And, you know, of course, I, I totally agree with you, Daniel, that the, you know, actually that was a, it was another word I sensed the Lord speak in my heart several years ago, that the age of ministries is ending. Not ministry, but the age of ministries, where we have this fractured body of Christ, where, you know, we're, it's, you know, it's kind of almost like we're in competition. We're like little entities and little corporations here and there. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's a body. We're the body of Christ, and the, the arm and the elbow and the fingers are meant to move together. And so, this is something that's going to come as, as a witness to the nations, this oneness that Jesus really intended with the body. Because as Jesus said, they will know you are my disciples by your love for one another. And that is going to, that's the heart of our witness, will be our love for people and our love for one another. Daniel, of course, and I uh, love apologetics. And we're saying that, yes, the formation of the mind is essential so that we can explain the faith. But what we're saying is if you, you have a basic understanding of your faith, it is what it is. And if you don't have the answer to a question, you just simply say to someone, you know, that's a great question, and I'll get you the answer. But the essence of what Daniel is saying is what Paul VI said. And I, I just want to turn to that one more time, because he said the world calls for and expects from us simplicity of life, the spirit of prayer, charity towards all, especially towards the lowly and the poor, obedience and humility, detachment and self-sacrifice. Without this mark of holiness, our word will have difficulty in touching the heart of modern man. It risks being vain and sterile. So I agree with Daniel. If all we do is give head knowledge and try and explain Mary and the, 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 the communion of saints and purgatory, no, people need to know the gospel. They need to know what is called the kerygma, the first proclamation of the gospel, the good news. I mean, the first thing Jesus said was, repent and believe the good news. Well, do you know what the good news is? And again, I've given it to you, John 3, 16. But then what do we do? What has to happen? And Jesus gave it to us in the Great Commission. He said, go therefore and teach the nations everything I've taught you and make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So when you give someone the good news and they say, well, what do I do? What do I do from here? You take them to the church and you say, Father, I got another one to baptize here. You know, folks, there's not going to be any what we call in Canada here, RCIA. Um, what do you call it in, in Same America? Same thing here. You, Same thing here. Okay. There's not going to be time to have a year of RCIA. We're going to be doing what they did in the Acts of the Apostles, taking people to puddles of water and baptizing them in, in puddles By of water. By the droves. Because yeah. it will be like that. There's going to be No more forms, no more red tape. There's not going to be time for any of that. No. The, the people by the billions, I think, are going to be, I mean, maybe I shouldn't use the B word. Many, many millions. So many people are going to be coming into God's grace. It's going to be the most beautiful thing you could imagine, but you need to be a part of it. The, you, as Our Lady's Little Rabble, it's a great post that Mark wrote, read that. You need to be ready. And, and I mean, the, the number of souls that you will bring into grace, not that you've done it by your power, but Christ has through you. It, it's it's amazing to think about. So if you're ready to hit the ground running, then you will be able to be like a new apostle. You will. And we need our priests on board. We have a lot of priests watching us right now. You are key to what is going on. And so this is a time of prayer for our priests. Our Lady keeps saying, pray, pray, pray for your priests. Pray for them. 
there's this persecution, the fifth seal we're talking about, it's already beginning. We can see it beginning in the streets. We've seen at the time of this broadcast, a couple of churches have already been torched in the United States. We've seen uh, acts of vandalism in Europe, by the way, hundreds of acts of vandalism. And it's not reported out here in North America. We're North Americans, but I've been following it. So this has already begun. We need to pray for them because they're key. And that's why Satan is attacking the priesthood so much. Well, Daniel, uh, I don't. Is there anything you wanna you wanna add now to the end of this? Any other thoughts you've got written down there? Well, you know, I just have one thought, and this has just stuck with me for so long. After the warning hits, I feel like I can see it in front of my eyes right now. New York Times front headline: Doctor Whoever explains how gamma ray bursts from celestial phenomena triggers release of certain hormone at the same time. The, the, the secularists who have chosen against God are going to waste no time to try and steal away the graces of this event. Do not believe them. This has been prophesied beforehand, exactly what's going to transpire. Trust what you experienced. Do not write it off as some sort of neurochemical phenomena. In a future webcast or in a future writing, maybe I can get to explaining from a scientific view why there is no scientific, scientifically possible explanation of what can happen. There's no way to explain what will happen at the warning in terms of a cosmic ray or anything of the sort. I'll explain that later. But suffice it to say for now that you must you must be aware that they are going to try and steal away these graces. Absolutely. The devil is going to be cast out for a time, yes, but remember, not, not chained, just blinded. He's, he's not done. So this is a brief time. We're not putting a number of we're not putting a specific time. Some mystics have put a specific time frame on it. We're not going to do that here. We're just going to say it's brief. So you need to not waste any time taking advantage of it. That's right. Satan is going to come back. Is it, In fact, if you read the book of Revelation chapter 12, it says that Satan then, after he is cast out of heaven, and by the way, that word heaven, St. Paul uses it when he speaks about the principalities of the heavens, of the air. So it's a domain, it's a, it's a place of authority that God has given Satan, the ruler of the world, Jesus said, is coming into the world. And so Satan has, has a domain, that domain is going to be somewhat broken. And then Satan, it says, then goes and he concentrates his power into the beast, into the Antichrist, into his world system. And so this will be the strong delusion spoken of in Saint Second Thessalonians 2. So those who don't receive the graces or who reject the graces of the illumination, as, as Daniel was saying, you had a little saying actually before the webcast, um, something about how, how whoever receives it will receive it and who those who don't, you know, their hearts will get harder. I'm, I'm butchering it, but... Uh, basically, sounds about right. But that's, yeah, that but that's the, right. the, it will be a hardening. It will be a shaking of the fence. You know, the line in the sand. The, the, that's right. The, oh, now I remember. Not yeah, everyone's going to convert. The, yeah, the good will, will the, in the very depths of when I say the good, I don't mean look around you and judge who's good and bad, but I just mean those whom Jesus knows, those, those the elect, the good will become better. They'll become saints, the greatest saints ever. The bad will become worse. There will be no more fence. There will be no more middle ground. There will be no more lukewarmness. This warning will push people to the sides. So like never before in history, that will be the time to choose the side because there right. will be an extreme separation. Of For the, the final the confrontation. That's right. Exactly. For the final confrontation, as John Paul II said, between the church and the anti-church, the gospel and the anti-gospel, Christ versus the Antichrist. Antichrist. And so you, you have to understand that there will be He's deception, as it says in right. Second Thessalonians. There will be signs and wonders done to make the warning and to make this time to give it, a, as Daniel was saying, a scientific explanation, a natural mm -hmm. explanation, and a new age explanation. Right. I, I want to recommend my writing called The Coming Counterfeit. Mm -hmm. And you, we will, if I can remember, I'll put that in the comments, just above the comments at the, at the YouTube site. And you can read that. Click on that link about the new age deception that is going to follow this illumination of conscience. Daniel, before we go, though. We should just comment on one other aspect that is tied to this illumination of conscience that will happen during this eye of the storm, and that is that many seers have said there is going to be a great miracle, miracle. left yes. that will have no natural explanation. 
Yes, this has been spoken of at Garabandal and Magigori and other places as well. This permanent sign, indestructible, that if anyone dares after the warning to say, no, there is no God, you can point to that sign and say, well, explain that for me. So God is not leaving us as orphans. I have exhorted you because of how important your role is in this. But don't worry, God is going to be very active in this reprieve with miracles. And I think it is very safe to rest assured that it is not just the Garabandal miracle. It's not just the Medjugorje miracle. I think there's going to be miracles all over the place. So you need to be ready and willing, but God is going to be doing, as always, the heavy lifting. We just need to be eager and happy and willing to do our part to say God's will be done. Use me as you will, Lord. Here I am. The eye of the storm is a time of calm. It's a time of reprieve. There is a Psalm, Psalm 46. It says, God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Thus, we do not fear. Though earth be shaken and mountains quake to the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam and mountains totter at its surging. Streams of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst, it shall not be shaken. God will help it at break of day. Though nations rage and kingdoms totter, he utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold, is the God of Jacob, who stops wars to the ends of the earth, breaks the bow, splinters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm.